Hello guys, this is Mr. McAllen, and as I promised you in class today, I said I would put a video up uh, just detailing the proof of the fundamental theorem of calculus. We're going to set out to try to prove that the area under a graph, f of x, is equal to the antiderivative evaluated at the upper limit minus the antiderivative evaluated at the lower, lower limit. So what we want to do is we want to first consider a new type of function. Here we have a continuous graph defined on the interval from a to b and we want to consider a new function that will be an integral function. And we'll call that capital F of x. And that's going to be defined from a point a to some unknown value of x that will find the area underneath the function f of t. Let me just diagram over here on the left what that represents. So I'm going to pick an arbitrary point and this will be x. So because we have a new function that details how much area we have trapped between a and x, what we want to point out is that this is the variable of the integral function. And what we also want to do is maybe consider some values for this function. For example, if I consider finding the value f of a, that would be the integral from the lower limit of a to the upper limit of a underneath the graph of lowercase f of t, and we would have to say that that would equal zero. So now let's consider with our new function what its derivative would be. So remember the function <coughs> f of x is equal to from uh, the area into the graph from a to the upper limit of a variable value x underneath f of t. And what we're going to do is we're going to consider taking its derivative. Now remember the derivative of this function, f prime of x, would be found using differential calculus and the limit as delta x goes to zero of um, the change in the area function over the change in x. And in order to show that, I'm going to draw graphically over here in another color of ink what that might be. So that is my next strip of area which is going to be located at x plus delta x. I'm going to just shade that in a little bit so you can see that area. And that area, as I'll draw over here, represents um, the change in the area function. So what is that area? How can I represent it in terms of function? For instance, the width of it, I can say, is delta x. The height of the function on this side is f at x and the width of it on the right side is f of x plus delta x. So a question came up in class today, which one should we use? Well, as we have learned that as delta x becomes smaller, head approaches zero, um, the value of f of x approaches a value of a function at x plus delta x. So we're going to just choose to use f of x for our area. So in terms of a computation, the change in the area function is really equal to our function height f of x times delta x. And that would represent that area. So back to the limit, I'm going to rewrite the derivative of the area function is equal to the limit as delta x goes to zero. And my formula for delta f, again, was f of x times delta x divided by delta x. Now remember in the fall when we were working on derivatives, 
that we, whenever we evaluate a limit, we had to try to get rid of the value that made the denominator zero. And as you can notice here, the delta x's cancel out, and our result is f prime of x is equal to just the function value. This has many, many, um, it's a very exciting statement in math, and um, but it's tough to see it in this form. So let me just rewrite it uh, based on how we started. Let's go back to the beginning and remember that f of x is equal to the integral of from a to x underneath the f of t curve. So we're taking the derivative of the integral from a to x underneath the f of t dt curve. And what this implies, the implication of this statement is that um, this is basically known as the fundamental theorem of calculus part, uh, part two. And this basically says that the derivative and integral are inverse operations. The second thing that this says is remember whenever we had a derivative and we wanted to undo the derivative we call that anti-differentiation. And when we anti-differentiated we would always have to add a constant to the antiderivative that we found. So in this case when we anti-differentiate we're going to get rid of the derivative symbol and we're going to be left with the integral from a to x underneath the f of uh, f of t curve and that's going to equal the antiderivative plus a constant. Now earlier in this uh, in this segment we stated that we knew a value for this integral. If we had uh, evaluated this integral function from a to a, we knew the value was zero. So we're just going to use that initial condition and we're going to plug in um, x equals a and when we plug that in we find a solution for our constant from our anti-differentiation. And this tells us that the constant has got to equal the negative of the antiderivative evaluated a. Okay, so what does this really mean? When we plug this back into the original equation, We now have f of x, but instead of putting c, we have negative f of a. And as you can see, this is our fundamental theorem of calculus part 1, which allows us to simply state that if you want to find the integral of any function from uh, a lower limit a to an upper limit of b, you, near, you just need to find the antiderivative at b, subtract from it the antiderivative evaluated at a. This concludes the fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, uh, you know, a proof from earlier in class, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And um, I'll have some more segments that further detail some of the significance of this lesson. Thank you.